News Channel 5 on your side presents Kaleidoscope, focusing on people who make a difference in Northeast Ohio communities. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast today. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope. The annual Celebrate Sisterhood Multicultural Health and Wellness Conference takes place Saturday, October the 17th. It's a conference chaired by Dr. Margaret McKenzie. She's co-chair, and she's here to tell us more about this event, which is geared to women. Later on, we will hear from Yvonne Pointer, who will share her experiences at the grand opening of a school she built in Ghana, and she'll be joined by Laura Cowan of the Laura Cowan Foundation. And on the broadcast after that, the President and CEO of the Lupus Foundation of America, Greater Ohio Chapter, Suzanne Tierney is here, and the Vice President of Operations and Patient Navigation is Leslie Viscara. She's here to share information as well about lupus. Good morning, everybody. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope, and so we begin. Beginning with a medical doctor, one of our good friends who is helping us stay healthy in our community, Dr. Margaret McKenzie, uh, who is co-chair of the Cleveland Clinic Celebrate Sisterhood Conference. Good to have you with us. Thank you, Leon. Yeah, it's things good to are, be here. Things are going well. Yes. Over at the Cleveland Clinic, you're a gynecologist over yes, there. Yes, absolutely. So, so you, yeah. you, you get a chance to, uh, to, to, to keep people uh, and remind them to stay healthy. Absolutely. Yeah. You've got a big event coming up that I know you want to talk about a little bit. It's called Celebrate Sisterhood Conference. What, what is that? So this is actually um, a program that we've designed for um, women's health, mm -hmm. particularly multicultural women, because um, we feel that it's important for them to understand what their risk factors are and how they can manage those risks um, mm -hmm. so that they can stay healthy and keep their families uh, and their spouses healthy. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who, would, who would you suggest attend this event, which is slated for Saturday, October the 17th? I would say all women and uh, any men who would like to support their women, definitely, they're welcome to come as well. You're going to be talking about you and your colleagues and uh, other people in, in the medical business, in medical uh, uh, health, health services are going to be talking about all kinds of issues. Absolutely. Give uh, me an idea of some of the issues you talk about. Okay, so um, this year, um, things that um, we have uh, taught, we've got Dr. Mike Roizen, mm -hmm. who is um, a nationally known author and um, the chief of wellness at the Cleveland Clinic. And uh, he will be talking about um, this, uh, how, how do you get to design a new life. Um, we also will be talking with, uh, we've got Dr. Valerie Montgomery Rice, who is um, the president and uh, the dean at Morehouse College of Medicine. Mm -hmm. And uh, she will be participating on a panel with Dr. Linda Bradley, who is the founder and chair of Celebrate Sisterhood. Um, uh, and um, we will be having a discussion with women on all the questions that you're afraid to ask your doctor. All those and kinds of correct, things. Correct, exactly. So we will be discussing um, topics that, are, that women are afraid to ask about, uh, but we think that it's important for them to be um, knowledgeable about. And you've got other people on the, on, on the, uh, on the program as well, other, other medical doctors uh, who yes. talk about uh, uh, Leslie Cho, I say, and Lenore Osario. Right, Osario. so we, this year we have uh, two additional co-chairs yeah. uh, in addition to myself, and one is Dr. Leslie Cho, who mm -hmm. is a cardiologist at the Cleveland Clinic, and um, Dr. Uh, Lenore Osario. Yeah. Oh, oh, and the, the, this event is going to be uh, Saturday, October the 17th at Executive Caterers. Maybe we can get a shot of this on camera seven. My sure. cameraman there, Jim, is going to zoom in and give us a, give us a good, good shot of this. Tell me about ticket availabilities. And so um, uh, tickets are going fast. Um, we had about 700 women last year, and uh, this year we're expecting about the same. Tickets are currently $50, and originally we were going to increase the price after a certain date, but this year we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, you need to go online and get your tickets at uh, Celebrate Sisterhood. Um, and the, um, the email address is uh, www.cleveflandclinic.org slash Celebrate Sisterhood. Yeah, we've got that on the screen right okay. now, or should have that on the screen right now. Okay, great. And, and this, this really encourages people to, to remain healthy. Absolutely. And, and I, I was intrigued by one of the things you said at the beginning of, the beginning of our interview. You said this, you will, can ask a lot of questions Absolutely. that perhaps you've never asked your doctor before. Correct, yeah. All it, kinds of questions. All about, kinds of questions. Yeah, oh, regarding especially women's health. Uh, women's health uh, in particular. Uh, we really like to focus on um, 
how patients assess their own personal risks mm -hmm. and uh, how they can go into the doctor's office empowered to ask uh, questions that will affect how their own personal life outcome. Uh, and most women are actually afraid to talk to doctors and ask those questions. Uh -huh. And we really want to empower them to go out and ask those questions. Before we started the broadcast, you said you're going to be talking about sex too, because sex play, play, plays a vital role in, in the lives of men and women. And as a gynecologist, that's all part of your area of absolutely, concern. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, um, of course, you know, without sex, the world wouldn't run. Yeah. But the problem is there are lots of misconceptions, particularly mm -hmm. um, uh, as we get older and there are questions that women might be afraid to ask mm -hmm. and um, we will be more than happy to address those questions and make us all comfortable um, in, those er in, in those areas. Starts at, the check-in is at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's Saturday, October the 17th yes. at Executive Caterers at Landerhaven. That's at 6111 Landerhaven Drive in Mayfield Heights. You cannot miss it if you get out into that neck of the woods. Saturday, October the 7th, Executive Caterers at Landerhaven. You'll see it right there in Mayfield Heights. And once again, the ticket prices were? $50 and... Um, and uh, we're not going to be increasing the ticket prices. I should also mention that this year we actually have uh, three honorary co-chairs mm -hmm. who are supporting mm -hmm. us. Um, one is um, uh, uh, Margaret Wong yeah. um, and um, Anita Cosgrove. And um, also we've got Lynette Jackson um, from Key Bank. I know them all. All okay. fine, fine people. Absolutely. Well, many thanks, Margaret McKenzie. Thanks we a lot. appreciate you being on the broadcast. You can get more information by dialing 855-897-7727. You see that number at the bottom of the screen. Or you can go to clevelandclinic.org slash celebrate sisterhood. It is a way to remain healthy and stay informed about Absolutely. your own body. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. McKenzie. We all appreciate right. it. Thank you very much. She made a house us. call, and we appreciate the doctor making another house call. Thank you, Dr. You're welcome. I'll be back in just a moment. We're going to talk to Yvonne Pointer about opening a school in Ghana, as well. Laura Cowan is with her as well. This is Kaleidoscope. Back shortly. Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope. Good to have you with us. The head of the Gloria Pointer teen movement, Yvonne Pointer, is here. She recently returned from Ghana, where she celebrated the grand opening of a school she funded. She's here along with Laura Cowan, one of several Clevelanders who accompanied her on that visit to Ghana. Good to have you with us. Yvonne Pointer on the left, Laura Cowan on the right. Good to have you with us. Glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about why you got started w with, with a school, the Gloria Pointer School, named in memory of your daughter. Yes, yes. Well, in 2003, a young boy in Africa found a piece of paper on the ground about the rape and murder of Gloria Pointer, and he wrote a letter to me to say that he was sorry to hear about what happened to her. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, that one letter had a ripple effect, and it catapulted a relationship between me and him. And he started an organization in Africa in her name, and they eventually invited me to come over. And I did. I wept. I said, I got to do something. And the concept of a school was birthed. It was born right there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But how do you do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Laura, you went with her. Why did you inv get, get, get yourself involved in this? I had to. When she told me about the school, and I knew Gloria's story, and it was just amazing. And I, I just wanted to meet the women out there. You know, there's, there's trouble as far as domestic violence or things like that with women all over. And I thought I could really go out and maybe touch other women globally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You named this in, 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 in memory of your daughter yes. who was murdered, who was murdered in 1984 yes. on her way to junior high school. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. By the way, this is a picture of the school there in it's Ghana. It's a beautiful is, building. Mm -hmm, that, that, that's what you had built We in need Ghana. to say that that school is in a village where they don't have running water, toilets, electricity, but in our school, the mm -hmm. toilets flush, there's running water and there's a shower. It's amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you had the ribbon cut there. Yes, you. yes, with uh, Nana David Whitaker and Nana Adequa, and so we were there in the village and actually opened a school that's going to house 50 students. It's more like a boarding school, and we're excited about it. Uh, geared toward boys and girls? Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. We had a band in March just in. It was a huge yeah. celebration in the village. And Laura, you were just involved in this. You just had to be involved in this I as had well. to be involved. I mean, you should go back to the motherland. It was amazing. And the people were so friendly. In the nation of Ghana. Yes, yes. it was 22 individuals that took the trip. And mm -hmm. we are called Team Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And a part of us now is to go back and even do greater things. Right. 
I'm interested because, uh, very much interested in this story because you, you, you built a school mm -hmm. and it was a school, your daughter was on her way to school in 1984 yes. when she was found murdered mm -hmm. on her way to junior high school, yes. middle school, wow. right. Harry E. Davis, as yes. I recall, school. Exactly. And, and so that prompted you to get involved in the lives of other children. Yes, well, I think that all of us can sit around and complain about what the problems are, mm -hmm. violence in our communities, but it's up to us as individuals to say, okay, here, if it is to be, it's up to me. How do I, as an individual, make this world a safer place for children? And we all have power to do that. It's time, we just got to get up off our do nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop depending on mm -hmm. someone else, the mayor, the president, the legislators, and ask ourselves, what do we do to 20, make the world a better place? 29 years later, we found out who did it. Yes, the and case he is was He's in prison. Yes. And you have met with that man who yes. murdered your daughter yes. in prison. You've I talked did. To him. I went to the prison and I had a visit. And guess what? I didn't go there to say, I hate you. I've already forgiven that individual. I asked him to help us save the children. We're talking about saving lives. Laura, your story is one of you were held captive in California for yes. six months, yes, held sir. captive in somebody's garage, I recall, or, exactly. or somebody's house. Right. That changed you when you, got, when you were able to escape. Mm -hmm. You said, I'm going to do something about it. You have to do something about it. There's other people out there suffering too. Yes, sir. So that's why you're involved with mm -hmm. cases like, and stories like this. Exactly. What does she bring to you? Well, women and sisterhood, mm -hmm. you know, it's a power when two can come together. And yeah. so Laura and I work uh, fervently to just make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And not only Laura, but we have people like Margaret Mitchell from the YWCA that mm -hmm. went with us. And I tell you, Margaret is on a mission. Yes. We had people, as you mentioned, Jeff Phelps, Margaret Who Russell. took the photographs yeah, that, yeah, that, that yeah. we've used on the air. We appreciate that. Uh, 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 let me ask you, Laura, yes. what does Yvonne bring to you and to the rest of oh, us? Oh, like she said, sisterhood, because we, I joined her group, Positive Plus, and there's some powerful sisters in that group, and we come together once a month, and we brainstorm of what we can do to change the world. I like being around positivity, Leon. It's awesome, you know? So there are things that, that we can continue to do. There are mm -hmm. other projects that I'm certain you've got in mind, Lots. the two of you have in mind. Yes, yes. Tell me, tell me about well, what Well, some people don't know. They say, well, why Africa? But I also have a scholarship here through the College Now program. So what we're going to do is just keep mm -hmm. using our voices, lending our voices to the voiceless, not just in Africa, but right here in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. How do we make our city, our world a better place? And in our final 30 seconds, we've got to solve problems about crime and yes. domestic violence, yes. which you, you have been a victim of domestic violence. Exactly. Murders, all that. We've got to resolve all we this. We have to. We've got we've to get got involved. Yes, we've we got the power, the power, don't we? Yes, Amen. we have the power. People can contact you with that phone number we're yes, putting on the absolutely, screen? absolutely, because people might want to know, well, how can I get involved? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, we have some work for you to do. That's right. Just go to YvonnePointer.com. <laughs> you see the email, uh, the, the, the website, the website on, on, yes. on, 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 at the bottom of the screen. Or 216-999-8573. Two wonderful, wonderful yeah. human oh. beings here in New Radio Cleveland area. <laughs> we love you both. Love you yes, too. thank you, Leon. Thank, thank, thank you, you so Leon. much, Yvonne Pointer and Laura Cowell. <laughs> Taking a break, I'll be right back in just a moment. Awesome. <laughs> I'm Leon Bibb, this is Kaleidoscope. The president and CEO of Lupus Foundation of America, Greater Cleveland Chapter, or really the Ohio Chapter, Suzanne Tierney is here, and the vice president of operations and the patient navigator, Leslie Biscara, is here as well to talk about the organization and about the, the Lupus Foundation and a chronic autoimmune disease, lupus. Good to see you, Suzanne Tierney. I'm so happy to be here and so grateful that you invited us to, um, to share about lupus because much awareness is needed. Yeah. How are you doing? You're, I'm doing okay. I know you Thank suffer you. from lupus. I do. How are you I'm making I'm probably it? the best looking, sickest person you might know. But you're hanging in. But I hang in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me about the, the mission of the Lupus Foundation. So the mission of the Lupus Foundation is to educate and pr uh, promote awareness about the disease. Uh, provide support for patients and to change uh, to look for research for new medications um, for a cure uh -huh. okay 
Well, what are its symptoms, uh, 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 Leslie? What happens when a, when a person has lupus? Basically, lupus is inflammation that happens anywhere on the body, resulting in low-grade fevers, skin rashes, fatigue, joint pain. These are just some of the few symptoms that lupus mm -hmm. patients suffer from. When lupus affects the major organs, such as your heart and kidneys, is really when lupus becomes detrimental yeah. to health. Yeah. You're a patient navigator. That means you help patients navigate through what? Every day. Uh, we, you can call the office anytime if you're looking for more information. If you're looking to talk um, about lupus and the disease, I welcome you to call. It's my personal mission to help each and individual lupus patient better navigate the disease. I'm going to put a phone number on the screen. We can get more information as we continue our conversation. 888-NO-LUPUS uh, is the phone number. 888-NO-LUPUS. Or you can go to lupusgreaterohio.org. More information on everything mm -hmm. we're chatting about. T -t Tell me, you, you, you're, you're very much involved in now. You deal with the disease, I do. but you're also dealing with the with the with the organization, the foundation. I am. What do you need to happen? What do I need to happen? Well, first of all, I want to talk about. I, people need to understand that this is the disease that primarily affect women. We suspect that there's 60,000 lupus patients here in the state of Ohio. The majority that are affected. African-American women mm -hmm. or women of color are affected two to three times more, worse, mm -hmm. than Caucasians. There's a huge disparity issue that we have. We are trying to get new drugs passed, research done, and we need candidates for studies, for research studies, or to people to step forward, uh -huh. and even the fact that they need to be educated about the disease for early diagnosis, early treatment, so there's less damage. Is there a hereditary component in all of this? We don't know that. We're working on it. Interesting enough, I'm an identical twin. I have lupus. My twin doesn't have lupus. Mm. Okay. There are a lot of things that we do not know about lupus, and still years later, you know, we have a lot of questions with a lot of unanswered. We need a lot of things answered. Leslie, how, how do we treat it? There's many treatments to treat lupus. Uh, Plaquenil or prednisone, uh, really following patients' orders are what we are teaching our patients. Um, there's a new medication out there called Benlista, which is a biologic medication. Uh, it's for lupus patients specifically. And uh, it, really, we talk about following the doctor's orders. Uh, some patients take over 23 medications a day. Mm -hmm. And taking those medications as prescribed is so important. You've got programs and services uh, offered by the organization, too. T t tell me about that. We have over 40 support groups throughout the whole state of Ohio. We also offer a new patient education class that's held in four cities throughout the state. We also have a 10-step program, Learning to Live Well with Lupus. Um, and we have online support groups and teleconferences that you can call. If you check out our website at lupusgreaterohio.org, you can find all the details on these programs. Each one of you is wearing a, a little emblem on, on your left lapels. Tell, tell me about that emblem, what, what, what that is. I, I know it has to do with lupus. It does. So <clears throat> two years ago, I was invited to Washington to be a part of a brand change for the Lupus Foundation. And this is what was presented was a question mark. So the P in lupus has been changed to a question so many questions and we don't have the answers so we are pursuing the questions um, we need research done we need more money for research and patients have questions they're very frustrated doctors have questions we don't have answers so that's the question it's that's our new brand and i know and, and, and i know that that your color is, is purple yes so we thank and, you and for so, having so that I'm, wonderful I'm, tie well, today i said well <laughs> let me pull out a purple tie this oh, morning yes. i reached in the closet and found a purple oh, tie bless so, your so, heart we appreciate that i thought that, that would, would would connect connect mm -hmm. <clears throat> leave us leave us with, with 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 a final thought on why this is so vital to 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 contribute to the lupus foundation of course you're taking money for research and all that leave us with a final thought this disease is no longer an orphan disease. It is huge. Okay, it is a huge health epidemic, and we need to solve, this, solve it. We are a very small organization as opposed to other organizations. Much work needs to be done, and we have limited resources. So we need support. We need financial support. We need bodies. Mm -hmm. Okay, and most importantly, as a patient, here's what I want people to know. Lupus for me growing up was a lonely, miserable journey. Today, it doesn't have to be that way.
Even though I sit here and look normal before you, as most lupus patients do, you can't see the havoc that's going on. So okay? let's So, let's so call the Lupus Foundation. We're here to help you. We're here to help navigate your journey. You don't have to do it alone. Suzanne Tierney, President and CEO of the Lupus Foundation of America, the Greater Ohio Chapter, and Leslie Vascara, Vice President of Operations and Patient Navigator. Good to have you both on the broadcast talking about lupus. 888-NO-LUPUS is the phone number. Or go to lupusgreaterohio.org. Send them a check. They can use the money. We could. Because it's all about research. We'd be grateful. And give them your heart as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a break. This is Leon Bibb on Kaleidoscope. We'll talk about the urban league of Greater Cleveland with Samia Bray after this. Thank you. This is the morning exchange segment of our broadcast. That means Samia Bray. Samia Bray of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland is with us today. Hey, Samia. Hey, Leon. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Good. I hope you're doing okay. I'm doing good. On, on behalf of Marsha Mockaby and the Urban League family, we say good morning to everyone in the audience. What's going on? I am here today to announce that the Urban League has a new partnership with PNC Bank mm -hmm. and NID HUD to provide housing counseling for those who are in our area who want to get ready to buy their homes in 2016. Okay, and I've got a little information here. Well, what, 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 what happens when you get ready to buy your home in 2016? How's the Urban League going to help? Well, that's it. We're hosting the actual free classes, so the classes and the counseling are absolutely free, and it's for anyone who's interested in either buying a home and uh, they want to learn what to do, know if their credit is right, know if they're ready, uh, and, and answer those questions ahead of time, so that takes away the guesswork at the end. I know you've got something coming up on Thursday, October the 1st at 5 30 in the afternoon. Absolutely. Runs for three hours. Where, where are you having this, this, this class or, or, or this discussion? The orientation will be on Thursday, October the 1st at the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, and we're doing it after work so people can come in the evening time. Thursday, October the 1st, 5 30. It runs for three hours, and it's going to be the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, which is at 2930 Prospect at the corner of East 30th Street and yes. Prospect in the Midtown section of Cleveland. Near, Absolutely. Near, near downtown. Yes. What do you want people to walk away with? What kind of information? are they going to have in our final 30 seconds as we chat that? Well, you know, when, when we're looking at buying a home, sometimes we're not sure what we need. So in this class, they can learn all of that, and they can give us a call at 216-622-0999, extension 200, to learn more. You can get all the information you need if you're talking about buying a home. It's a big investment. You Indeed. want to make sure you do it the right way. Absolutely. Many thanks to Mia Bray is with the you. Urban League of Greater Cleveland. That's going to do it for us. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope. Be well. This has been a presentation of News Channel 5's Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland.